nightmare. So, so the, 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 the strength of the feeling did surprise me, even though the fact of it didn't. Clarence, at the, at the heart of it, why, why do you think blacks and whites have responded at an emotional level so differently to this verdict? Well, let me say, Frank Rich, as usual, is a very astute observer of our American scene. Uh, blacks and whites uh, have a very different uh, level of faith in the criminal justice system, speaking generally. Uh, first of all, not all blacks thought O.J. Simpson was innocent. Let me point that out. I, for one, uh, think he probably was guilty, but uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the case against him was not proved. And if you pay any attention to this case, you'll see the jury didn't have to turn to racial sentiment or solidarity to come forth with a not guilty verdict. Uh, simply on legalistic level, they could do it. Yet there is a, a profoundly national negative reaction, especially on the part of most whites, I think because it shows the great American nightmare, which is blacks rising up and uh, either killing uh, whites or being happy about the death of whites. That's not why there was that happiness at Howard University Law School. There was happiness because a black lawyer won a case mm -hmm. for a wealthy black well, man. Would, would you both allow that the post-verdict reactions say an awful lot more about what the races are predisposed to believe about each other than about Mr. Simpson's real guilt or innocence? A absolutely. I, I mean, I, th I think uh, Clarence is, is totally right that you can make an argument uh, for this verdict on, on legal grounds, on grounds that, that don't even necessarily have anything to do with race. But we can rehash the verdict and what the jury thought and said forever. It's the reaction that does speak. And so uh, that's why I wrote about it even before it happened, because you could see it simmering and coming and coming, by the way, in a, in a period in this, in this country's history where the signs of uh, racial polarization are all out there. This, this trial just tapped into it. It didn't create it. I mean, this is the year of sure. arguments about affirmative action, the bell curve, all the rest of it. Um, um, Frank Rich, we're, we're hearing some black people note that the one time the system works for them, white people suddenly view it as broken. What, what does that say of white America? Well, I, I agree with black people who feel that way. I think uh, when you go back to the Rodney King case, there was a lot of uh, crocodile tears on the part of uh, white people, a feeling that this was a, you know, a, a, a tragedy, and, and then people forgot about it promptly, as we saw in this trial and what was going on in the LAPD for other things. So. So they're right. There's a long history of, uh, of a justice system uh, in this country being unfair to black people, giving them unequal justice. Uh, so it, uh, white people have to see this in the context of our entire history, not as an isolated incident. But Clarence, if, if blacks think the system works against them and whites think the system is broken, um, what kind of a future does that leave us? Well, hopefully we'll reform the system, but there are still great racial disparities. New report headlined this morning, the sentencing project. Uh, one gentleman you, you just quoted in your, your report uh, from the sentencing project shows a 30% increase now in, in, in black arrests and incarceration, largely because of new drug laws passed in recent years for political reasons uh, against crack cocaine, but not powder cocaine. Crack cocaine is mostly used by blacks and Latinos. Powder cocaine is mm -hmm. mostly used by whites. I mean, we still have this disparity going on. We need in, to pay attention to it. Indeed, lost among all of this is, is, is the fact that, that predominantly black juries put away black defendants on an ongoing basis in this country, That's and right. nobody ever rises up and talks about the role of race in it. Our, our experiences are, are, are so different, gentlemen. How do you suggest we even begin to start talking to one, each other, to one another on even and rational terms? Well, our conversation broke down in the 60s. Uh, I think we were too optimistic. Blacks, whites, Hispanics, Latinos, every, or, uh, Asians. We were too optimistic. Uh, 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 white people in America, especially right now, look at how far we have come. And we have come a long way since the 60s and the 50s. But blacks are looking at how far we have to go. And we still have a long way to go. We need to get past our denial and start talking again about the racism that's still there. Frank Rich, as you noted in your column yesterday, a friend of yours told you that whites are now going to riot, um, as whites do that they will flee the cities, that they'll vote for far-right politicians, that they'll take it out on, on programs that primarily benefit uh, mi minorities. Um, what, what happens now? How do we begin to start talking at each other, to each other? Well, I think we have to talk frankly. I think that one of the problems this country has with race is that we sublimate it. And so we talk about midnight basketball when we're really talking about race. We talk about affirmative action and take extreme positions on it pro or con when most people know the, the real, the, the correct position is somewhere in the middle, 
because we're talking about race. We, 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 we code our, our language, and white people are particularly uh, guilty of this. And I think uh, we have to talk honestly, we have to let it all pour out and not get subsumed in just a, an endless debate about this actual mm. verdict and about whether you know, trial should be on television or, or, or even just about the LAPD. This is not just a Los Angeles story. LA may have a particularly uh, problematic uh, culture in, ter in terms of this case, but this reaction was nationwide. There's something the entire country is feeling no, here. In, in fact, this case was so atypical that it, that it probably distorts any attempts to, to draw clear lessons from it, and, or reforms for that matter. Final note, gentlemen, after the Rodney King verdict, we all shook our heads, said, what a shame, how different we are, and then we went back to the way we were. Is that going to happen this time around? I'm afraid uh, that after these racial eruptions, that's what I call these type of episodes, uh, where, the, where the, that thin veneer of, uh, of uh, peace uh, breaks through, uh, our first impulse is to put the lid back on, but it gets harder every time. After Clarence Thomas, Anita Hill, after the 92 uh, riots in Los Angeles, now OJ, it gets harder to put that lid back on. I think we need to keep the lid off and talk about this for a few weeks at least. All right. Gentlemen, I'm going to have to leave it there. I thank you both so very much. Frank Rich in New York and Clarence Page in Washington. Guys, have a good day. Thank you. you. Too. We're going to come on back in just a moment. There's more head right Take a break. After you guys. Sandwiches stuffed to the brim with fabulous fillings like chicken and broccoli. That's incredible. Or ham and cheddar. Mmm. In a tender, flaky crust. Mmm. I'm in love. Hearty and satisfying like you can't believe. For a tasty hot meal without a big deal. What are you gonna pick? Croissant pockets. New from the makers of Hot Pockets. Dear Midas. My wife's brake light had been flashing on, so we took the car to a repair shop. They failed to properly inspect the brakes and solve the problem. Then we took the car to Midas, rested a proper inspection, and told me... Oh, your brake pads are worn, causing your master cylinder to use more brake fluid, in turn causing your light to go on. Then I got new pads and a guarantee. I should complain to that repair shop, but I wanted to congratulate you instead. Thank you. Dave Buchanan. Tonight at Red Lobster. We're gonna ooh yeah. We're gonna mmm yeah. With our two dozen shrimp, just $8.99. Roasted shrimp with fresh veggies, plus scampi and fried shrimp. Our two dozen shrimp, just $8.99. At Red Lobster tonight. Every time I go, there's something different. It's very similar to what is in the window here. That's the thing about Pier 1. All this exotic merchandise that you can't find anywhere else. It's very colorful, very artistic. I bought a beautiful blue glass vase there. Things for the patio, too. It's exciting. It makes you feel good. There's always something on sale. Eclectic. I like everything. <laughs> it's a very happy place. Pier 1's home find sale, now through October 27th. An egg? A little piss quick, some milk. On a Sunday morning, it adds up to a lot more than pancakes. Updating the aftermath of Hurricane Opal in Panama City. Now, Florida State Trooper David Drake has been on the midnight shift, cruising the streets and keeping the curfew in order. David Drake, good morning. Tell us the latest. Good morning. It's a little bit windy here still. At, uh... A lot of debris, a lot of damage here. Tell us a little bit more, David, if you could, about the damage, because I know you had to really wait until sunup to assess it. What are you seeing around you? There's a lot of power lines down, a lot of power poles is broke, uh, a lot of trees down on the power lines, a lot of roof been damaged, uh, a lot of signs, other uh, trash and debris load onto the highways. What can you tell us about casualties or injuries as a result of this storm? I haven't been advised uh, lately of any uh, casualties or injuries contributed uh, to the storm. And were people obeying the curfew, David? Uh, most part, they are. Uh, there's a few of them that's got uh, been uh, advised by some other uh, sources that. Uh, the danger was passed and they could come back, but the curfew is still in effect until uh, 12 noon. 
and it could be extended beyond that. All right, David Drake. David, thanks a lot for talking with us this morning. We appreciate it. Now okay, we're going to go to Catoosa County, Georgia, where Lori Brody of our NBC... Down to the boot area. Now, as you take a look behind me here, over to my left, you can see where some of the cars are still out in the water. Chances are they're going to be out of commission for a while. Once again, many people are still without power in the area. Schools are closed in Tennessee and Georgia and Alabama in the areas that are flooded or have been affected by the storm. Uh, so once again, everyone's being very careful this morning because the roads are still dangerous. Katie? All right. Lori Brody in Catoosa County, Georgia. Lori, thanks so much. Try to stay dry. Thank you. I will. I'll get out of this weather, that's for sure. All right. And we'll be back with much more on today right after this. Ford introduces the all-new Taurus, where every curve flows into an ingenious new design, where one-of-a-kind ideas unfold. Where everything you touch is soft on your fingertips. And even the back seat shows forward thinking. The all-new Ford Taurus. If Mother Nature could make a bread, it would be Roman meal. Nutty sweet goodness. A low-fat way to help give your body nutrition. Roman meal. That's eating smart. Mabaloni has a first name. It's O-S-C-A-R. Mabaloni has a second name. It's M-A-Y-E-R. We use only select cuts of 100% quality beef in our bologna. And never any fillers. Because we wouldn't put anything in our bologna. You wouldn't put in your kids. Cause Oscar Mayer has a way with B-O-L-O-G-A. Oh, that cat's got the life. Now she's got this state-of-the-art scoop-away litter that clumps where she wets. They scoop away the clump, bam, the box is fresh and clean. All I get is a rusty hydrant. Scoop away, the litter that's day one clean every day. Gorgeous day outside, isn't it? It really is. We're the gonna... palm trees are beautiful. We're going to come back in just a moment after a station break. Kurt Russell and Martin Short. There are no pirates of the Caribbean. In the wackiest vacation movie of them all, Captain Ron, NBC Sunday. Stop. Stop. Don't pay retail prices for your computer needs. Come to the computer show and sale. This Saturday, Florida State Fairgrounds, Tampa, and Sunday, St. Petersburg Coliseum, St. Petersburg. Auto accidents can cause severe injuries to the spine. The professionals at ChiroMed can treat your pain today. Call 931-PAIN now for an immediate appointment. Call now, 931-PAIN. That's 931-PAIN. Hurry into Carolina Sofa this weekend and cut it in half. Cut your down payment in half. Now it's just $10 down. Cut your monthly payments in half. Now it's just $10 a month with zero interest for one full year. Cut it in half at Carolina Sofa. Choose from thousands of sofas priced at $3.98 to $5.98. With hundreds of fabrics available at no extra charge. And now it's just $10 down and $10 a month with zero interest for one full year. The best deal in town just got better. Get to Carolina Sofa this weekend and cut it in half. Hey, watch Seinfeld here on Channel 8. Storm Opal packing winds of 40 miles per hour, 34.7 north, 85.8 west. Moving to the north really quickly at 25 miles per hour now as we put all that into motion. You can see the uh, cloudiness associated with it now across uh, Tennessee and Kentucky, so it will dump lots of heavy rains there and still packing a few gusty winds, but things will be tapering off. It will continue to weaken, but the folks along the eastern seaboard will deal with the uh, rain now. I'll have a detailed look at our forecast coming up in a moment. All right, thanks, Greg. Hurricane Opal pounded parts of the Panhandle, and this morning the Bay Area responds after a call for help. Bay Area National Guardsmen packed up, headed out today. The troops will offer humanitarian assistance and help police in the heavily damaged areas. This is the same brigade that helped during flooding in North Florida earlier this year. This is the area hardest hit by Hurricane Opal. Piers are demolished, streets flooded, and buildings damaged. Fort Walton Beach and Destin were under a curfew to stop looters from scavenging the empty homes and businesses. At least 100,000 people between Pensacola and Wakula Beach were evacuated. And Storm Team Meteorologist Greg Fields comes back for a look at the Bay Area forecast when we return. In eight days, it begins. Pick up two, maybe three, or even four inches of rain in a few areas out there. Still have that urban flood advisory in effect. They are shot from downtown Tampa, the uh, plaza in downtown Tampa, downtown St. Pete, the plaza tower there. Mostly cloudy skies there, and the radar does show the uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms.
still moving through the area, capable of, capable of producing some locally heavy downpours in a few locations. Still a few gusty winds out there, although they will be subsiding later on today as well. So things will gradually improve for us, but we will have those periods of showers and thunderstorms on and off throughout the day. We've talked about Tropical Depression 18 could actually be Pablo before the day is over. Still a ways out in the Atlantic, so we mm. don't have to worry about that right now, but something to watch. I'm not sure we're ready to hear that yet, Greg. I know. I'm sorry. Mm, all right. Have to look at what's happening in the Bay Area. Now we take you back to NBC and the Today Show. For the best Chinese food, come to the largest Chinatown in the Midwest here in Chicago. For the best television in the morning is the wonderful Today Show. What a difference today makes. We're back now 8.30 on this um, Thursday morning. I'm sorry. Um, and we're back in Studio One in Los Angeles. Our NBC News Bureau is right above us, along with Katie Kirk. I'm Brian Gumbel. We are continuing to track Hurricane Opal. Um, I say Hurricane Opal because it was when it came ashore, but it is no longer a hurricane now. It is a tropical storm, and its winds and rain are still causing lots of trouble as it moves northward. We're going to try to find out what's happening in just a little bit. Katie? Also, Brian, we're going to be talking with a writer who has become good friends with Nicole Brown Simpson's family and has exclusive details of O.J.'s reunion with his two youngest children, Sydney and Justin. We'll also have more of my interview with defense attorney Johnny Cochran when he talks about how race was used in this trial. Okay, let's go on back to the news desk one last time on this Thursday morning. Here's Matt Lauer in New York. Matt? Brian and Katie, thanks very much, and good morning, everyone. Here's a look at the headlines. Hurricane Opal has lost much of its punch but left a trail of devastation in its wake. Now downgraded, as Bryant mentioned, to a tropical storm, Opal slammed into the Florida panhandle Wednesday. It brought with it winds gusting to 144 miles an hour and waves more than 12 feet above normal. It destroyed or damaged hundreds of homes and left hundreds of thousands of people without electric power. In other news, Pope John Paul II is... Those people who love and care about these kids are concerned that there's no monitoring going on, that O.J. can basically do what he wants with them. Another really upsetting thing is that apparently he had the reunion filmed last night and sold it to the star. I mean, that was on the wires. I, I don't think it's been refuted. Uh, it's just... It's just concerning. It's upsetting that there was no, that this happened so fast. There was no a psychologist involved. There was, seemed to be no a negotiation about how it would happen, whether the kids would come home to Dana Point and spend the night. They have bonded with the Browns for 15 months. Uh, they're very, very at home there. Mm -hmm. They've made a life there. Before, before we go, what do you know about any kind of custody battle that may occur? Because earlier in the week, the Browns said that they were going to try to cooperate with O.J. Simpson and not fight for mm -hmm. custody. There's been a bit of a change of heart there? There has. I heard yesterday that um, they were essentially reconciling with him. They, in these cases, uh, the father has the right, or the, or the surviving parent has the custody open and closed. And I think they were told that, and they felt they had no options but to conciliate. Sheila Weller in New York. Sheila, thanks very thanks. much for uh, filling us in. And we'll be back with more in today, right after this. At 8.43, we continue to talk of Opal and now get an aerial view of some of the destruction left behind when that uh, hurricane came ashore. Cameraman Rob Pierce is taking some helicopter shots for us. Rob, good morning. Good morning, Brian. We're over Panama City Beach. Uh, we just arrived here, and the devastation along the beachfront is massive. Let's take a look uh, live here. Uh, we are just, just to the east of the uh, city pier. You can see most of the buildings along the beachfront have received severe damage. Uh, pretty much all the way up and down the coast, you can see this. Uh, roofs gone, parts of walls down, extensive damage pretty much in every direction that we look. This is along the beach. More inland, we're not seeing this. This is, uh, this is just the view here along the beach. You go uh, two or three miles inland, and there's virtually no damage. Just a little, uh, you know, a few roofs that have had their shingles ripped off and things like that. But for the most part, the beachfront appears to have taken the biggest hit. Rob, what about flooding? Are you seeing a lot of evidence of it? Not really. We saw a little bit here in the uh, Panama City Beach, just localized flooding in some parking lots and around some areas. Really not a lot in the area. Again, the beachfront here, the homes that had to stand up to this 
uh, mile an hour wind, obviously, as you can see here from this picture, really took it hard. That appears at this point to be most of the damage. We're told that this area as well is without power and uh, very little phone communications. So people haven't really uh, been able to get out here at this point yet and uh, see the damage or hear from people who live in this area. I was going to say we don't see any people in the shot. What about further inland? Are the people still in the shelters or are they now allowed back out to return to their homes? Well, some of the roads are open here. Let me pan around here. You can see that there are, uh, you know, a lot of cops out, obviously, uh, patrolling the area. Th this area is open. The roads are, but we haven't seen a lot of people on the roadways. We can only assume that they're still in the shelters. We have heard that they uh, most likely will be uh, moving back to their homes and trying to find out what damage they sustained. Any idea what kind of power outages are still being experienced there, Rob? Well, we, here in Panama City Beach, a uh, complete power outage. We, were, uh, we flew through Tallahassee just a little while ago, not far from here on the eastern side of where the, the storm hit. They uh, had their power, so here in Panama City Beach, no power, and we're told further to the west along, along uh, the Pensacola area, they are without power as well. Of course, that, uh, the assessment of the damage and the power situation is still ongoing. In some other communities, we saw cars tossed against trees. We saw boats out in the middle of the road. You're seeing nothing like that there? Not right now. Basically, the, 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 the most severe damage is right here along the beach. You can see houses like this that have lost their walls and roofs that have been peeled back and debris all over the place. But for the most part, all we're seeing damage-wise is uh, related directly to the beachfront areas here. You go just a couple of... Uh, of uh, you know, mile or so inland, uh -huh. and we're not seeing it. You can see the houses over here, you know, off in the distance. They have their roofs, not much flooding, and the situation there is far better than uh, what we're seeing here along the coast. All right. Rob Pierce over Panama City, Florida, checking out some of the um, devastation left by Hurricane Opal. Rob, thank you very much. Thank you. All righty. We're going to come on back in just a moment. We'll take another break. And that's why African Americans are more like to believe a police conspiracy because they're bad experiences with police officers, not only in Los Angeles, but all across the country. And all we've said as African Americans to the majority community is, wait a minute, wake up, understand. We're not just making these stories up. This does exist, uh, and we need to cure it. Stop this cover-up. Stop this cover-up. If you don't stop it, then who? You've been highly criticized for your closing argument. There's some analysts saying that you asked the jury to do something that really is not their role. They didn't know what they were talking about. And in each instance, I said to the jurors, there was a reasonable doubt created. And based upon this reasonable doubt, you have an obligation to acquit this man. What I said also was this was the kind of case where you attack the police and their credibility. It's not for the fate of heart. It's not for the timid. It's for people who are courageous, who believe in the Constitution. Do you regret equating Mark Furman with Adolf Hitler? No, what I regret, however, is, is the, uh, the misinterpretation that was placed on what I had to say. All I did was make a comparison. I said that um, if you don't stop totalitarianism, if you don't stop people who are scourges, uh, it becomes a real problem. Ron Goldman's father, Fred, got very, very personal. This man ought to be ashamed of himself to walk amongst decent human beings. This man is a disgrace to human beings. I never say anything bad about Mr. Goldman. He lost his son, and I'm very sympathetic. My heart has gone out to the Goldmans. He's entitled to his opinion. Obviously, I don't agree. Obviously, the jury doesn't agree, and most people don't agree. But he's entitled to his opinion. Wait a second, wait a second. Most people don't agree. Yes, most people don't agree. On what do you base that? Well, I base it upon the fact that I travel a lot in this country, and that's not the view of most Americans. And so, uh, I know by my mail, I know by just what happens. Because what we've done in this case, when, you, when the historians write this story, what we've done, we have been the defenders of the Constitution. We've been the ones who said, look, wait a minute, it's not right or fair that you've taken this position and you prejudged this man. We're the ones who defended a man who's now been found innocent. Isn't that what America's all about? Who do you think did it? I really don't know. I mean, I think we were cut off at every turn. Uh, we wanted to explore the fact that uh, her very good friend, Nicole Simpson's very good friend, lived there, had a drug problem, had gone into a drug treatment facility, had called the house apparently that night. The judge says, oh, no, you can't do that. That might confuse. I mean, there were so many times in this case that we were shut down. Glad it's over? I'm glad it's over, Katie. It's been an experience of a lifetime. I wouldn't trade it. It's changed my life but I wouldn't trade it. It's restored my faith in the system. 
the day the Constitution won. And I'm happy about that. And we're back in a moment with more. But first, this is Today on NBC. Medley's introduced the most colorful country prints in the country. They're the quilted quicker pretty upper because they're a world of color. Prettier, cozier than ever before. The quilted quicker pretty upper. All new Bounty Medley's. Preserving Medicare for the next generation. The right choice. But what's the right way? Republicans say double premiums, deductibles, no coverage if you're under 67, 270 billion in cuts, but less than half the money reaches the Medicare trust fund. That's wrong. We can secure Medicare without these new costs on the elderly. That's the president's plan. Cut waste, control costs, save Medicare, balance the budget. The right choice for our families. The ultimate furniture shopping experience is about to happen because this Saturday and Sunday only, Cades is having its ultimate weekend sale. You've got two days to get ultimate savings of 23 to 70 percent off throughout the store. Choose from the ultimate top name manufacturers: Sealy, Lazy Boy, Serta, Bassett, Royal, and more, and get the ultimate financing: zero down payment, zero payments, and zero interest until April next year at the Ultimate Furniture Store this weekend. Cades has got it. Cades has got it. At the Home Depot, we're committed to low prices. In fact, if you ever find any item for less, we won't just meet it, we'll beat it. And that's on brand names in every department in our store. Every item for every project. Control your home's climate with a Honeywell Magic Stat 33, just $67.83. It has a precise temperature control and it's easy to install and program. You'll find it at the Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Just the beginning. About time for us to close up shop. Have you noticed the donuts here are a lot better than our East Coast Green Room donuts? Mm, actually, I hadn't. They really are. I'm telling you. You're going to miss them because you're heading back, right? That's right. I'm getting on a big bird heading back east. It's been a remarkable and unforgettable story, but I'm glad I'm going home, Okay. Too. We'll do a split screen tomorrow. That's right. All right. It's going to be a satellite. All right. Take care. Well, we'll see you tomorrow, too. Take care. Have a good Thursday. The world is now watching America's number one morning program. Today, NBC News, now more than ever. Hurricane Opal crashes into the eastern seaboard. Stories of survival at the center of this massive storm. Also, the Pope in America. Special in-depth coverage, NBC Nightly News tonight. Get ready to save big. It's the fantastic backdoor sale going on right now at Roberts. That means backdoor prices on Roberts' huge selection of name brand furniture. 50% off leather furniture, 50% off recliners, 50% off love seats, 50% off dining room tables, 50% off cocktail tables, 50% off beds and headboards. Plus, take advantage of 0% financing. Come to the backdoor sale going on now at Roberts. Biggest selection, best service, it costs less at Roberts. Help us help the community. Be an H Army volunteer. This is a News Channel 8 update. Good morning, I'm Gail Guayardo. It's 8.56 on Thursday, October 5th. We've just checked in with 970 WFLA for a traffic update. In Hillsborough County, be careful at Fletcher Avenue east of Nebraska Avenue. And also a tie-up in Pinellas on US 19 at Lake Tarpon Drive. Forecasters are still keeping a close watch on what was Hurricane Opal. It has become a tropical storm and is continuing to move inland and weaken. Lightning specialist Greg Fields has been watching the storm and brings us the latest. Greg? Thank you, Gail. Well, Opal continues to quickly move on out of the picture. It did dump lots of heavy rains across uh, Georgia and Alabama, but as you can see, they're on, uh, almost out of the picture. Only some lingering showers across Georgia, and we will have to deal with the uh, effects of it, it looks like, throughout the morning and in, into the afternoon hours as well. I'll have a detailed look at the forecast coming up in just a second. Thanks, Greg. The National Weather Service has issued a flood watch for Levy, Citrus, Hernando, and Pasco counties. That means flooding could probably develop in those areas from the heavy rain. In Pasco County, torrential showers already poured on the area, flooding streets in Fort Ritchie and Hudson. But homes were not flooded as they were in the devastating no-name storm of 93. I had 31 inches in the house the last time, in March 93, the no-name storm. And how much tonight? 
None, none, not a drop. Nearly 20 people took advantage of three Pasco County shelters overnight. For the most part, they were people who just did not want to ride out the storm alone. And meteorologist Greg Fields has a look at your Bay Area forecast when we come back. The best deal in town just got better. Get to Carolina Sofa this weekend and cut it in half. Now buy with just $10 down, $10 a month, and zero interest for a year at Carolina Sofa. Stop. Stop. Don't pay retail prices for your computer needs. Come to the Computer Show and Sale. This Saturday, Florida State Fairgrounds, Tampa, and Sunday, St. Petersburg Coliseum, St. Petersburg. Your car's finish has lots of enemies. Pretty soon, you need the, uh-oh, better get Mako guys. Get our great-looking Mako Ambassador finish for one low price, only $149. Call Mako today. Mako, America's smart choice. Here in the Outback, you can't take anything for granted. You did remember how I love onions, didn't you? Even a simple meal can be an adventure. Eggs the same. I forgot the blue onions. At Outback Steakhouse, you get all the mood of the Outback with none of the inconvenience. Roger. Is that? Outback Steakhouse. No rules. Just right. Watch the Jenny Jones Show weekdays at 3 on Channel 8. You are watching some video there from uh, Panama City. You can see the destruction that Hurricane Opal... Look at those houses there. Oh, that was terrible. left behind from Opal tearing shingles off the uh, homes there, eroding the shoreline. That was indeed a devastating storm. 144-mile-per-hour winds when it hit there. Boy, those folks are waking up to just pure devastation. Yeah, it's, it's ugly. So yeah. sad. So what does it look like today here? Um, we were, uh, of course, a little more fortunate than the folks mm -hmm. in the uh, Panhandle. We will still be feeling the effects of Opal, though. Today we'll have some bands of showers and thunderstorms moving through, continuing on this morning, possibly a one to three inches of rain in many locations, so please do keep that in mind. The surf will be up along many coastal sections as well, but the winds will be subsiding throughout the day. Periods of showers uh, on and off throughout the day, about a 70% chance of the rain. Continued breezy, as I just mentioned. Highs will top off in the upper 80s. Only some uh, widespread showers and storms for the weekend, more like what we're used to, so that's certainly some good news. Yeah, definitely good news. Something yeah. to look forward to. Definitely. Thanks, Greg. All right, that's a look at what's happening in the Bay Area and around the state. We will see you back here at noon.